welcome to John Snow Labs video series. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to train your own NER DL model. NER stands for Name Density Recognition, DL to Deep Learning, and Spark NLP has this annotator which trains on top of TensorFlow and gets state of the art accuracy results. NER or Name Density Recognition is to identify important entities in text, and we are going to train one model here. There are going to be six steps. First, we're going to initialize Spark NLP, which will, I assume you know how to install it. Step two is we're going to take a look at how the files are required in order to train an NER model. Step three, we're going to create a pipeline. Step four, we're going to train the model and create its deep learning graph. This is something specific only to NERDL. We're going to save this train model and then we're going to read its output metrics and test prediction pipelines. In this occasion, we're going to be using Spark LP 2.2.2. If this version is not available yet, it's because it's about to be released. So for posterity, I'm using the latest release candidate available. Let's begin. First step is we initialize Spark LP. So we do the imports of base and annotators which is all we need, and the pipeline and pipeline model for Spark. Then we need to import the CoLL class. The CoLL class is basically a class that allow us to read the training trainable CoLL file. So we instance it with CoLL and we call the function read dataset, which uses a Spark session and reads the target file. And then I'm going to show it. So how does the CoLL file look like? To train your NER model, either CRF or deep learning in Spark LP, we use CoLL 2003. So it's basically a docs.line to identify different documents, one token on each line, and empty lines mean new sentences. The second and third column are part of speech. We can, you can use Spark LP to generate this if you want. And the last column has the label, which is an O for nothing. B or I labels are for the IOB labeling system. So we go back to the code. We read the color low. We are sure that it's read by Spark LP. There's going to be Spark LP annotations already, one on each column document assembler, sentence detector, token, part of speech, and the NER label. Coral is doing this for us. Next, we create embeddings. NER requires embeddings, so we create the word embeddings annotator. We set the source for those embeddings with this function, set embedding source, to a Jensen binary file in this case, the dimensions, and the type. We also decide not to include the embedding source when we save the pipeline. And we give it a name or a reference, which is called clinical. This ref will be used later, so don't worry about it right now. Afterward, we create the NER DL approach. Approach is for, stands for trainable annotators. Model is the instance of a trained annotator. The basic inputs of an NER DL are sentence or document type, tokens, and embeddings. The output column name will be NER, and we need to define a graph folder, which is the location of where we put the graphs. Excuse me, I need to close this. And next we put some settings. NERDL, we're going to use only one epoch of training just for this dummy example. Set validation split is a new param that allows Spark LP to create automatically a validation set. Takes it off the training set, we put it to 25%. We enable output logs, which will basically print some training metrics on our home folder. We include confidence scores on each prediction later on. And we report some metrics on the console through this parameter called evaluation log extended. Finally, for training, we need to define which is the name of the label column. So we use the word label because the column reader puts it on a label column. Perfect, so let's create these settings. And now we build the pipeline. The train pipeline will only have the embeddings and the NER deep learning. 
Well, why? Any R deep learning consumes sentence and token. Where are sentence and token in the pipeline? They are not there because the training data set already has them. If you take a look at the colloid reader, the output is a data frame with already documented sentence and token. So we don't need those. Perfect. And now we have started the training by calling fit on the target data set, which is the colloid file. This might take a few minutes depending on your hardware. So I'll pause the video now and resume in a minute. Okay, so you'll notice the training process will fail, but this time it's a useful fail. Requirement failed, graph dimensions should be 200. Could not find a suitable TensorFlow graph for embeddings dimension 200, tags 31, and number of characters and chars 130. So we need to create the graph. This is something very unique to the NERDL. Hopefully in the future we will improve this process, but this is the way to go. So what we will do is save the Jupyter Notebook, close process, and then we can go back to generating this graph that's required. For that we can open a different command line, and we will need to have the repo cloned of Spark Alpha, or at least the Python folder. So we go to the Python folder inside the repo, TensorFlow, NER, okay. And in here, we will be able to run Jupyter Notebook in this location. And we will see these files. This notebook called create models is the important one that will create the graph for us. We need to create a graph that looks like this. Let me delete it so we make sure we are creating a new one. But also since the version 2.2.2, you will be able to run this through a script. So you can do it in a command line directly. For now, let's do it in the old way. We have a notebook here. We open it, we run it step by step until the end. In the end, there is a function called create graph and it has three numbers. Number of tags, embedding dimension, and number of characters. So where do we get the numbers from? Well, the error. Go back to the error. We'll see that it was asking for dimensions 200, tags 31, and mchars 130. So we put this, 200, 31, 130. 200 is the one in the middle, 31 is the number of tags, and 130 is the number of characters. This will create the graph for us. It's going to put the file in the same location of the notebook. We can put higher numbers, like 50 and 200, and it will also work, but it will use more memory but it will work with any range of values in that range. To optimize the memory usage, it's recommended to create a graph for each size. So let's, once it's finished, if we go back, we will see this PB file. Now we need to move this file. If we go back to the tutorial, where, if you remember when we created the NERDL approach, we put a set graph folder in my folder here called graphs. So let's do that now. I will close the Jupyter Notebook. And I will CP this PLSTM 31, 200, 182, 130 PB file to my home folder in a fold called, fold called graphs. Okay, so we CP the file, and now we can restart the Jupyter Notebook and start the actual training. So we go back to the part of fitting the model. I'll go fast forward on this until the step of fit. Perfect. Now, I'll give it some time to do the actual training. Now it should use the graph we just created.
I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, we're back. So after a few minutes, the cell finished processing. So now let's get started with using this pipeline or creating a pipeline for prediction. In prediction, we will have raw text. So we now do need to create the annotators because if you remember, the training pipeline only has two annotators, the embeddings and the NER. However, now in the prediction of some unknown text, we will not need to do the document assembler, the sentence step and the tokenization. There's also an important annotator called NER converter. This will convert the NER output into a chunk. So let's create these annotators. And now we're going to put them all together in a prediction pipeline. Here's a small trick. I could put the embeddings, trained, and the NER, trained model. However, I am putting directly the trained pipeline because this pipeline has the embeddings and the NER. I can definitely wrap pipelines inside pipelines. And since this is already a trained pipeline, it's good for prediction. So this would perfectly work. The most intuitive use case would be to, instead of putting this train pipeline, we go up to the train pipeline, we check the stages, and we take each one of the stages separately. The first one and the second one. So if we do the first one, we get the embeddings. If we do the second one, we'll get the NER deep learning model. These are trained annotators, so I could put them in here, but I would need to put them in a different variable. So let's do this, train pipeline. It's also to show you how you can play with Spark LP as if it was a puzzle. Now that we have this prediction pipeline, we need to have some prediction data. I am making up a sentence here. I put in a data frame and now I fit the prediction pipeline which nothing happens here because every step in this pipeline is already trained and I call transform which is the prediction so here I have a prediction very simple now let's go to the final step which is I want to save this prediction for later use I simply call prediction model write I overwrite any pipeline with the same name and call save and that's it mostly. Um, just to conclude, if we want to load it, we need to load it with the pipeline model, read load. And then we can use it. So there's a small detail here. We can just take a small detour. Remember in the word embeddings annotator, we called a setting to not include them. Set include embeddings false. If your embeddings are huge, like these are 1.7 gigs, I decide not to include them with the pipeline, making the pipeline lightweight. However, when I read the pipeline, it won't work if I don't load the embeddings. How? Well, I can use a class called embeddings helper, put the source, spark session, the type, and the reference name, which we put, we called it clinical. So in this way, we can load the pipeline from disk. I won't execute this code here because my embeddings are already loaded, but if this was a new Jupyter notebook session, I would have to. And then we can come again and transform. Okay, so with all this done, given that we set up some parameters to report logs for metrics and validation testing, we can check out those logs in the home folder in a folder called annotator logs. In these files we will see per label metrics, overall metrics, F1 scores, accuracies and other information that's very relevant to the analysis of a training process. So with this we conclude this tutorial. Hopefully it is useful for you and keep in touch for further videos. Bye bye. <music>